Let's make some stylized hair grooms with Blender's new hair system. In this video, I'll recreate this hairstyle I made for one of my characters. The job will be rougher to keep the tutorial short. Feel free to follow along or to use it as an example to create your own hairstyle. The shader I'm using is inspired by a tutorial from Lightning Boy Studios channel. I encourage you to check their channel out if you're interested in this kind of art style and don't already know them. You'll find a link to their tutorial in the description, along with a link to a demo file on my Cumroad. The demo hair in there have a pretty similar shader that you can grab for free. 1. The preparations. I skipped this step when doing the groom, since it is an updated version of a previous groom I had made with the old hair particle system. However, it's good practice to search for references and create a hair draft by roughly sculpting a mesh in the shape of the hairstyle you want to achieve. It helps place the hair curves correctly and gives an idea of the final groom style and volume. This specific groom and its shader work best with Eevee. In the render settings, make sure you're in Eevee, that the curve shape in the curves panel is set to strip, and that the additional subdivision setting is at 2 or 3. 2. Hair modifiers. To make the first hair system, select your sculpt mesh. Go to Add, Curve and select Empty Hair. It'll create a hair object called Curves. This new object only has three modes available. Object, Edit and Sculpt Mode. In the Sculpt Mode, you'll find tools similar to the ones of the old hair system with some new additions like the Density Brush, Snake Hook Brush or the Slide Brush. Select the Add Brush for this specific hair system. Let's go to the curve shape menu to set the point count to 10 and the length to something around 0.15 meters. The length can be easily modified with the grow shrink brush later on. For the interpolation, tick the length and point count options. In the brush settings, set the count to 1 and add a first strand at the base of the scalp. Isolating the scalp mesh can be helpful when placing strands at the borders. Before doing any combing, let's add a set of modifiers to the system. If you do not have the asset browser already open somewhere, make a new window and set it to the asset browser. In the hair library, under the right category, grab the set hair profile modifier and slap it on your newly created strand. The art style of this groom requires thick strands, but 0.01 meter is a bit too thick compared to my character's scale. Let's reduce that to 0.006 meter. Under the generation category, Grab the duplicate modifier and add it to the stack. The duplicate modifier is the equivalent of the simple generation mode for trial particles in the old hair system. In the same way, the interpolate modifier corresponds to interpolated child particles. In the settings, let's reduce the radius to a very small value like 0.02 meter. You can leave the other settings to their default value. Let's then add a clump modifier under the guides category. For clarity's sake, we'll rename it to clump root or we'll use it to reduce the root radius of our thick hair strand. I couldn't find a way to recreate the use clump curve option of the old hair system, so I went with two clump modifiers instead. It'll make sense later. Let's change the shape to minus 0.6. Feel free to play with the other values. To make the strand a bit more uneven, we can add a freeze hair curves modifier under the deformation category. It is somewhat similar to the random option of the children roughness settings in the old hair system though not exactly the same. I gave the freeze modifier a small factor of 0.362 and a negative shape value of minus 0.38 so that the tip of the strand stays unaffected. Let's add another clump modifier to clump the tip this time. I reduced the factor value to 0.8 so that the tip isn't completely pointy. Finally, let's add our material to the hair system. 3. Layering. A good way to make a groom is to work with layers starting from the back of the scalp and combing your way to the top. I tend to separate my grooms into six types of layers. The back or bottom layers, starting from the top of the nape to the top of the ears. The fill layers, in betweens that are here to make sure the groom has no bald spots, especially during hair simulation. The top layers, the ones that defines the parting of the hair and that require the most attention. The optional front layers, they give style to the groom mostly bands or thinner strands to the side of the forehead. The optional secondary layers, thinner strands to add some variation here and there. And flyaways layers, single hairs to give the groom more flow and make it more realistic. Having a lot of them can give a messy look to the groom. With this style, it works a bit like planting hair strands in a doll's head, one by one, in rows. Once you've made a whole row, let's jump into edit mode. Select a vertex of one curve and hit Ctrl L to select the whole curve. Back to sculpt mode. 
Select the comb brush and gently comb the curve in the desired position. We'll have to repeat the process for every curve. Sometimes, especially for the hair of the back layers, you can select multiple curves at once to go a bit faster. In my case, I separated the back hair into three systems. They don't exactly share the same modifier settings, but the difference is small enough that they could be merged into one single system. I just prefer to keep them separated. Okay, we've made the first system. The other two are pretty similar, only a row further up. My second system has a duplicate amount value of 12, a root clump value of 0.7, and a tip clump value of 0.9. Let's groom it the same way as for the first system. Select a curve, comb it into position, etc, etc. You can adjust their length and implantation using the grow shrink and slide brushes if needed. The third one is planted on the line at the top of the ear. Here are its modifiers. Comb it like the two others. Four, the bun. This hairstyle has a little bun at the back of the head. It's not meant to be realistic and was supposed to look round and a bit cute to match the character's style. I had originally made this bun with the old hair particle system and converted it. I know two ways to make one. The old way I used, create a new hair system with a plane as a surface mesh, plant a little circle of curve guides. Using the same combing method as previously, place the curves one by one in the desired bun shape. Modifiers will take care of the rest. The plane makes it easier to move, rotate and scale the bun afterwards to get the best bun placement. A new way made possible by the new system, add a UV sphere. The number of rings minus one corresponds to your future hair curves point count, so set it accordingly. Eight or nine is a good number. Delete the two pole vertices. Shape it like a bun, with the holes being the root and the tip of the bun. Place it where you want the bun to be. Make sure the root points are in contact with the surface mesh, the scalp or a plane. The sphere's origin should be at the center of the root. After applying the scale, Select all the vertical edges in edit mode, duplicate them, and hit P to separate them into a new mesh. You can heart or delete the sphere. Convert the new mesh to curves. Check the curve's direction. The starting point of the curves needs to be at the root of the bun. Otherwise, the following steps will give you weird results by sticking the tip of the bun to your scalp. Now, convert the curves to hair curves. Add a surface deform modifier to them. In the properties, select the surface mesh and its UV map. In sculpt mode, make sure all curves are selected. Go to curves and choose snap to nearest surface. Add a set hair curve profile modifier below the surface deform to fix the crazy curves. You can then comb the curves a bit to make them look less uniform. This method can allow you to create all sorts of shapes with hair. You can use meshes or regular curves. Don't hesitate to experiment. Whichever method you chose, at this point the workflow is the same, and you can add modifiers to your bun curves. Here are the modifiers I put on mine. Once you're happy with your bun and its placement, we can move to the other hair layers. 5. The bangs. I like to do the front layers before the fill and top layers. I feel like it creates some kind of style preview, and encloses the layers. Like the bun, the bangs in this case were also converted from the old groom. Let's create a new hair system. Choose a shorter length and a point count of 8 to recreate them. Here are my modifiers and their settings. Add some curves at the front of the scalp. Since they're supposed to be stylized, comb them in a shape that make them look stiff, with a bump at the root and a round slope towards the ground. Try to align them along the forehead's normals. Using the Grow Shrink brush or a trim modifier, add a bit of randomness to their length. 6. Fillers. There are two fill layers of hair in this groom, the tied one and the mostly loose one. Let's start with the tied one. Create a new hair system, and plant the curves in a row a bit further than the middle of the scalp. The curves at the center of the scalp can be planted a bit further back compared to the side ones.
Here are the modifiers and their settings. Comb them close to the scalp, like if they were shrink wrapped, and stick the tip in the bun. You will most definitely need to add length to the curves with the Grow Shrink brush or the Trim modifier. The Grow Shrink brush goes and space out the curved points evenly. If the hair gets hard to comb, add a redistribute curve points modifier from the utility category and apply it. The smooth and slide brushes come in really handy. The process can be quite tedious and repetitive, but we're close to the end. Create a new hair system for the loose layer. Here are the modifiers and their settings. Let's set curves around the ears at the border of the scalp. Comb the curves and add another row of curves. Comb them. Add a last row and comb again. A board circle should be left at the top of the scalp. Seven, top of the head. Here are the modifiers for this layer. Plant the curves in a way that defines the parting of the hair. Starting from the back, comb the curves like the tied layer, wrapped around the fill curves below them with their tips inside the bun. Using the viewport shading set to random can help. Once you feel that enough hair are tied to the bun, you can comb the remaining curves along the sides of the head. You can now go back to the fill layers to add or move curves and cover the bald spots. The scalp of the character should also be painted in the same color than the hair, but darker.
8. Secondary strands. I wanted the groom to not look too perfect, so I added a few thinner strands at the back. They look like they were supposed to be tied in a bun, but either fell or were left aside. Here are their modifiers. Place them right below the fill layers and comb them like the back layers. Nine, fly away. Let's add the final hair system. The curves will only need a set hair curve profile modifier with a radius set to 0.00 to meter. Add them a bit randomly and make them roughly follow the hair below them, but be sure to let them stick out a bit. Adjust their length with a grow shrink brush. The shorter the hair, the stiffer it should be. And for la, your hair groom is now finished. If you want to add simulation to it, you can check out my tutorial about it. I'll probably make other hairstyles in future tutorials, so don't hesitate to leave some feedback about this one. It could be helpful. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you found this video useful.